Okay, just recall a bit from the last lesson. We talked about momentum P equals MV. Okay, now scalar I is vector. Vector, okay. So V is a vector, P is a vector. So momentum is a vector. That means it has a sign, positive and negative sign. Object moving here, it has a momentum in this direction. Object moving the opposite, it has momentum in the opposite direction. So when you do the calculation, you want to be careful with the V. Anything that is moving opposite, there is a negative in the formula. So you will get a negative answer. Now, talking about momentum, this become a very, momentum in general is a very important lesson. Why? Because momentum talks about moving objects and object that has mass. If you see everything around you, everything has mass. Even air has mass, everything else has mass. And also they are constantly moving. Every single object around us is constantly moving. The earth is rotating, it is orbiting. If you look at the microscopic scale, the particle, they are vibrating. You go to the subatomic particle, the electrons are also vibrating. Everything else is vibrating. Nothing ever stays stationary. Nothing stays stationary. Okay, so if everything has mass and everything is moving, then everything has relation to momentum. Momentum can be applied universally everywhere. Okay, from planet to planet, from objects on the earth, interplanetary collision, everything. Now, one very important principle here we will discuss. What is the principle of conservation of momentum says? Okay, let's say you got five bodies. Okay, so five bodies is moving like this. They move towards each other. This body has a certain velocity. This one also has a certain velocity. This one, this one, this one. They are all moving at different speed. Okay, maybe this one 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And here, they move, they all come together like this. Before they collide with one another, when they are coming together, before they hit one another, I can calculate the total momentum of every single body. I will, I will take MV for the first one, plus the MV for the second one, third, fourth, fifth. I edit everything up, then I get the total momentum of the system. Now, notice that I say system. What is a system? A system is any surrounding that consists of two or more body under study. I repeat, a system is a surrounding that consists of at least two or more bodies that is under study. So let's say we look at this situation where there are five bodies come together. So this becomes a system, a system of five bodies. Okay, so you can, think, you can think about the earth has the earth system, the ground, the air, the molecule, the people on the earth, every single object on the earth that makes up the earth system the Earth system, right? And then on the other hand, you have the Mars system. On the Mars, you have the atmosphere, you have the water, the, the air, everything on the Mars that makes the Mars system. Okay, so you have different system. And in physics, we are talking about, we are always studying system. We are always studying what? System, okay? So let's say we take a system of five bodies. Okay, huh? so now they are moving towards each other. I calculate the total momentum before they collide. So I will say total momentum before collision. Let's say I found it, it is okay, 1000. Okay, now these five bodies, now they come together, they hit one another, and now they move away from each other. When they hit one another, what happened to the velocity? The velocity is going to change. Okay, after they hit, definitely the velocity will change. So when they bounce off of each other, they are now moving in 
a new velocity. So V, V2, V3, V4, V5. Okay, now same thing. If I calculate the momentum of every single object, this one plus this, plus this, plus this, then I get again the total momentum, but this will be the total momentum after the collision. Okay, so there is one event happening here. What is the event? The event is the collision. Okay, the collision is the event, or we can say the incident. This incident separate before and after. If I look at the total momentum, I look at it in two ways. I look at it before and after. So the principle of conservation of momentum says that the total momentum before is equal to the total momentum after. Let me write it here on the board. Here, one body, you got five body. Like this, M1, I'm going to call it U1. U is the initial velocity. Yeah? So U1, this is object number two. I will put it M2, U2. M3, U3. M4, U4. M5, U5. These are the momentum of each object. If I add everything up, then I get the sum of momentum. I call it sum of momentum number one. If you add everything. This is the sum of momentum before, okay? Now, here's an incident, they collide. They collide and then now they move away. What happened to their velocity? The velocity definitely have changed. So I'm going to write M1, V1, M2, V2, M3, V3, M4, V4, and M5, V5. Okay, the mass does it change? Mass does not change, only the velocity change. Because of the velocity change, the momentum changes. The momentum of each body changes, but the momentum of the overall does not change because when you add up this one, you get the sum of momentum after. This one is gonna equal the after. This is what the law is saying. This one, very important, okay? The sum of momentum before equals to sum of momentum after. If you added the momentum before is 100, then after the collision, it has to be 100. It cannot be 99. It cannot be 101. It has to be exactly 100, okay? So there's one condition for the law to stay true. What is the condition? The condition is there cannot be an external force. I repeat again. The condition is there cannot be external force. What is external force? The word external, that means something coming from outside. Recall back what is our system. What the systems in got? What the systems is the body. Okay, this is my, my system. So that means if somebody from outside suddenly step in and apply the force on any one of the body, F, what is this force? This force is going to be the external force because the force is coming from outside. Okay? So if there are external force, there is also internal force. So what is internal forces then? You see, when one body go and hit another body, it apply a force. The force come from this body, this one. It apply the force on this body. So this force comes from this body and this body is originally in the system. That means it is a family of the system. Okay, we have a family of five bodies and this is one of the family, right? So he applied the force on the second body. This force is also count. This force is counted as internal forces because the force come from the family. The force come from the member of the family. Okay, so we call this force internal force. But this force coming from outside, it is it is an external force. 
stranger. Okay, now, what are the examples of external forces? Here, I have given the first one. This is the push or pull, push or pull from external agent or external body. That's the first one. Number two, is there any other example of external forces? Friction is an external forces. Here, I write it down, frictional force. This is the same as air resistance. Okay? Because our system is only the five body, not including the air. So the air, apply the friction, that is considered external. Number three, is there any other? Okay, there's one. But in this case, this one doesn't have, which is engine force. Force from the engine, okay? We can also call it a thrust. Force from engine or force from the rocket. Okay, that, that is also external forces, but this one is not applied, applicable here, All right? So these are the common one, the common, external forces that you need to you need to know is gravity or external force gravity acts on every single object correct so the overall effect cancel out so gravity we do not count it as external force in this situation because every single body got gravity pulling it so the overall effect i'll just cancel it okay the effect cancel out Okay, yeah. now that summarizes the principle conservation of momentum. So what does it say again? We can put it in words is that we say the total momentum in a system is conserved. Unless, okay, provided there is no external force acting in the system. I will say on the system. What, is it, what, what does it mean by uh, conserve? The word conserve means before equals after. Okay, before equals after. So if I say total momentum in a system is conserved, that means total momentum before equals after. <clears throat> Okay, and then in a system, this one, I can also say in an isolated system or in a closed system. Sometimes you'll see in your textbook, they say this closed system. What is a closed system? Closed system is like a system where nothing can influence the member of the system. I give you one example, like the billiard, the snooker. Okay, the snooker table. One ball go and hit another ball. Anything outside the table cannot influence what is happening on the table because the surface of the billiard is made very smooth. It's made very smooth and the wind barely acts any air resistance on it. So there's no influence from outside, from external agent. What happens inside stays inside. That is a closed system. All the forces in on the table is only originated from one ball or another ball, one another. Okay, no other agent can apply the force on it. That is an example of closed system. Okay, in in, in other words, is you can just say in short, uh, a system with no system with no external force. Okay, so this is a closed system. Now, does closed system exist in real life? The thing is, in real life, you cannot escape from friction, right? Everywhere got friction. Whenever you go, wherever you go, there is always air resistance. So in real life, there is no perfect closed system. Okay, no perfect closed system. But in calculation, we will assume, we will just assume that 
it is a closed system. That means we will straight away ignore the friction. I will write here, I'm assuming no friction. Assuming no friction when I do the calculation. Okay, but just to give you an idea of it, if external forces is there, then this no longer true. This will not be equal to this one if there is external force. What you learned in the last lesson, when you have a force acting on an object, what happened to the momentum of the object? This is the object initially at rest. I raised it, now it is moving. So momentum is zero. Now it has extra momentum. I apply the force on it. So whenever I apply a force, I'm increasing the momentum. So if you have an external force acting on the system, you will increase the momentum of the system. Okay, so let's say you have like two bodies. A system of two bodies. What is the total momentum initially? Okay, you got is 100 kg ms minus one. Suddenly, somebody go and pushed it. So this person apply a force. This force will increase the momentum. So from 100, maybe now it becomes 150 kg ms minus one because the speed increases. The mass is the same. The speed increases, so the momentum increases. Okay, force can change momentum. But without this force, then the momentum in the system stays 100. One body hit another one. They are all internal forces. The total momentum stays 100. Okay, yeah? now, one example. Ball A, go on and hit ball B. Both are traveling at first, initially. Both are traveling to the right. But because ball A is moving faster, so eventually it will go on and hit the one in front, like the truck hit the car in front. What happened when the truck hit the car in front? The car moved forward and then the truck slows down. Okay, so there is a collision. And after that, this one, ball A, the mass, 5 kg, it hit ball B and it slows down to, okay, let's say two meter per second. Still moving forward and ball B, 2 kg, the V, we want to find the V. After it hit ball B, what is the V of the ball B? Now, if you look at this system, we have a system of two bodies, huh? two bodies. And then we look at what is the incident that separate before and after. The incident here is the collision. When this one hit this one, they collide. And then what happened after? So I will call this before and I'll call this after. Okay, analyze the forces. Ball A, go and hit ball B. You have a force produced. Is this force internal or external? The force comes from a member of the family. So that is an internal forces. So if it's an internal forces, again, we can say momentum is conserved. Momentum conserved. So if momentum conserved, then this law apply. I can write total momentum before equal total momentum after. I can apply this formula since momentum is conserved. Okay, then I calculate what is the total momentum before. Okay, V here, MV, M1, U1 plus M2, U2. This is the momentum of body one. This is the momentum of body number two. So five times four plus two times two, 20 plus four. 
equals to 24 kg ms minus one. This is your total momentum before. And you know it's going to be equal to after. So this one, m1 v1 plus m2 v2. Okay, what is this? Let's put in the value. M1 is 5, 2 plus 2 V2. Okay, so equals 10 plus 2 V2. This is total after. So this one equal to this one, I can write 24 equals to 10 plus um, 2 V2. Okay, so 24 minus 10 equals to 2v2 and 14 divided by 2, 7. ms minus 1. v 2 is up. v 2 or swan down. Chi meter per second. Using what? Using the law of conservation of momentum. If there is an external force, can I use this one? I cannot use this one. I cannot use this formula because if there's external force, then this would not be equal. Okay, so since there's no external force here, then I will write, okay, this V2 is going to be 7 ms minus 1, like that. This formula allows you to find velocity after collision or mass or anything before and after collision. There's always one incident in between. The incident can be collision, explosion, okay, or any, any other event okay, that separates this before and after. Now, question sometimes they will ask you, state, state the assumption that you make when you do the calculation. How do you answer this? State assumption, what you assume when you do the calculation. When I do the calculation, I assume that there's no friction involved because I don't want external force. So assume no friction involved. Or I can say assume friction is negligible. What is negligible? Negligible means so small the value is so small that we ignore it. It doesn't have any uh, obvious effect. So we ignore it, we drop it. It's negligible, okay? Assume friction is negligible. Okay. One minute and I will go to the next slide. Okay, I'm going to go to the next slide. Huh? Now we will look at one. We will look at one example that you see in our everyday life. That very typical example, very famous example, is the recoil of a gun. We all know that when you 
make a shot. What happens to the gun? Recoil backward. Okay, there is a recoil velocity. And using the principle of conservation of momentum, let's see how can we explain the recoil velocity. Why does it happen? And also, let's see how can we minimize the recoil velocity, like how the military training they do, the, how they train the soldiers in minimizing the recoil velocity. You see, suppose that we have a, a gun. Okay. And a bullet. We are going to take two bodies in the system. Okay. So this is my system. How many body? The gun body number one and the bullet body number two. A system of two bodies. Okay. Let's say the gun is, all right, I put two kg and the mass of the bullet is 20 gram. This is before the firing. Before I make a shot, everything is at rest. Okay, if you look at the total momentum, nothing is moving, right? So if you calculate the total momentum, M1, U1 plus M2, U2. Okay, this one is zero. This one is zero. The whole thing will be zero. Total momentum is zero because everything is at rest. Suddenly I press the trigger. Okay, I press the trigger. And then now the bullet shoots out at a very high velocity. Let's say here, 20 gram, and it is traveling at 500 meter per second. This one, 2 kg, it recoiled backwards at a certain velocity V. Okay, what is the incident here? The incident here is the firing, okay? So that means before and after. This is what happened before and this is after. Now, we already analyzed the momentum before. What about the momentum after, the total momentum after? Okay, then we can calculate again. M1, V1 plus two body. Yeah? So we have M2, V2. M1 is two kg into V1. I'm not sure what is V1, I just write V1 plus 20 gram, change it to kg, 0 0.02, and then 500 here. This become the total momentum after. Okay? Momentum is conserved or not conserved? Momentum is conserved. Why momentum is conserved? Because there's no external forces. You see, when I press the trigger, there's a force produced from the gunpowder, right? The gunpowder here, there's a force produced that propels the bullet forward. Now, the force produced from the gunpowder, the force coming from where? The force coming from the bullet, inside the bullet, right? So it is also a member of the system. So is the force external or internal? The force is internal force. Is there any other external forces acting? No, I'm just holding it like this. I'm just holding the gun like this. If I push the gun, then I'm applying external force. If I push and pull the gun, then in that case, there is external force acting. Okay? Because my system is only this two body, not including my hand. So if I hold it like this, still I'm not moving, then there's no external force. Momentum is conserved. Okay, so momentum conserve here, then we can write before, after. Before is zero. After is, how come before can be zero? How come before is zero? Before can be zero only if after you get a positive and a negative momentum. That's how you add up to zero, right? So momentum after, one must be a positive, one must be a negative to add up become zero. So here is zero equals to, I will write two V1 plus 0 0.02, 500. Okay, zero equals to two, one plus 10. 
here. I bring the 10 minus 10 equals 2v1 minus 10 over 2 equals v1, v1 equals to minus 5. Why there's a minus here? Because v1 is going opposite direction. That's why you have a minus here. This is 5 meter per second. If I label the arrow, then I do not need to put the negative. But in my mathematic equation, I cannot show the arrow, so I have to show the negative. Okay, so based on your calculation, what you found, the recoil velocity is five meters per second. Is it fast or is it slow? Five meters per second for a gun is considered very fast. When the gun hit your chest at five meters per second, it can quite, it can be very, it can be quite painful. Okay, sometimes it may cause a bit like fracture. Okay, five meter per second. So how do you minimize this recoil velocity? If I want to minimize this five meter per second, how do I minimize it? You see, in the military training, they are trained to hold the gun very firmly. Okay, they hold the gun very firm. Not only they hold it very firm, they have to press the gun, the back of the gun against their, their chest here. They have to like attach their whole body to the gun. Why they want to do that? Okay, all soldiers, they are trained to do that. But why they want to do that? Based on the concept of physics. Okay, how can we explain it? You see, when they attach the gun towards their body, the gun, the hand, and the body all together become one body because they are attached, right? They all become a single body. So that means you are increasing the mass of the body one. Body one is the gun, right? What is the mass before? It was two kg only. Body two is the bullet. Now, if I attach the gun, I press it against me, then I will have increased the mass here by my mass. Okay, let's say it's 60 kg. I would have increased the body one mass to 62 kg. Okay, then again, we put in the formula, zero equals to 62. Instead of two, it becomes 62 V1 plus 0 0.02, 500. Okay, zero equals to 62 V1 plus 10. Minus 10 equals 62 V1 divided by 62 equals V1. What is this? 0 0.161. Your V1 equals minus 0 0.161. You see, a simple action by pressing against your chest, you have reduced the recoil velocity from 5 down to how many? 0 0.161, which is very small. Okay, 0 0.161, very small. So. The recoil is not as 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 hard. It's only a little bit of recoil. Okay, so what we have done here is that we increase the mass of the system, increase the mass of the gun. This is an example again of principle conservation of momentum. What are other similar examples like this one, similar to this one, like the Rocket, okay, you have the rocket launched. At first, the rocket at the launch pad at rest, U0. Is there any momentum? No, total momentum of the system is zero. During the launch, it all the hot air rushes out at very high speed. And air has mass, right? Air has mass and it rushes out at very high speed. So air has momentum. What are the two body here? Body number one is the rocket. Body number two is the air. So you have mass of the air, M2, and the very high speed air rushing out, V2. You have momentum here. This is momentum downward. 
And then at the same time, you have the rocket going up. Momentum one, sorry, mass one into V1. This becomes momentum one. One momentum is positive, another momentum is downward. You add it up, plus and minus, add it up, it becomes zero. So that is the total momentum before zero. Okay, so in the propulsion, in the study of propulsion, you want to propel yourself forward. What you have to do, you have to create a backward momentum. Without a backward momentum, you cannot propel your, yourself forward. Based on the, based on what law? Who says this? Not me. This conservation of momentum says this. Similarly, you want to push yourself forward. You want to, you want to walk, move forward. What do you do? You press your feet backwards. You press your feet against the ground backward. You do not press your feet forward. You press your feet forward, you go backward. Okay? So you press your feet backwards, then you propel yourself forward. Again, it is momentum negative, momentum positive. Okay, so there are many examples. Many examples, examples of momentum. Okay, huh? Now, so far, there's only one formula that we learned. Uh, in this part, uh, so the formula is going to be m1 u1 plus m2 u2 equals to m1 v1 plus m2 v2. On the left-hand side is before, on the right-hand side is after. You have to be careful with the velocity. Uh. So, for example, let's say we got two ball. Ball A is moving to the right at 2 meters per second. 2 kg. Ball B is moving towards it also. This is 1 meter per second, 2 kg. They collide, they collide head on, and then they bounce back. If they bounce back, ball A, sorry, let me clear this a bit. Okay, if they bounce back and ball A go backwards at a velocity of 1.7, okay, I just put in some random values. Then what will be the velocity of B? V, 2 kg, 2 kg. Then again, you calculate this using the conservation of momentum. Okay, then we put in total momentum before. two times two plus two times what? This is one, but the velocity is moving to the left, right? So this is a negative one, minus one. Because on the diagram, I can show the arrow pointing to the left, but in the mathematic equation, I cannot show the arrow. How do I show the arrow? I use negative to show the arrow, okay? This negative is to represent this arrow is going to the left. So negative one equals, okay, two, again here, 1.7, this is also a negative. Negative 1.7 equals to two V, and then you can calculate V. Okay, what is V? Again, I write it on the left side here. Four minus two equals minus 3.4. Uh, this one is should be plus uh, plus two v four minus two so two plus three point four equals to two v five point four divided by two v what is the v two point seven meter per second it is a positive so you know b go where go positive go to the right. If you get a negative, then that means ball B, go to the left. How is that possible? Yes, that is possible. One ball collide with another one. They both go in one direction. Okay, if you get a negative, if you get a negative, sometimes 
Sometimes you don't know where it goes and it depends on your answer to see where it goes. Okay, to see where it goes. All right, one minute and we will go to the next slide. OK， 来，下一个啊。OK， 呃、uh, ，one more part。Then we'll finish this. Elastic collision versus the inelastic collision. So we talk about collision. There are two types in general. Elastic collision that means after they hit one another, they move separately. Okay. When they collide, they move separately. For example, like kicking a ball. Okay, the ball comes, you kick it, and then move separately. That is also elastic collision. For example, the billiard ball, one ball bounces off of another, and then they move separately. When they move separately, that means they have their own velocity. When two bodies collide, after that, they move separately. This is going to have V1. This is going to have V2, different velocity. Okay, that is elastic collision. Now, for elastic collision, what happened is that the kinetic energy, kinetic energy, we say that kinetic energy is conserved. Again, what does it mean by conserve? Conserve means again before equals to after. That means the kinetic energy before equals to kinetic energy after, even after they hit. If you have kinetic energy before was 100 joule, okay? After they hit, the total is also going to be 100 joule. What is kinetic energy? Energy due to movement, right? Movement. The faster you move, the higher the kinetic energy you will have. Okay, so the formula for kinetic energy is 1 over 2 mv square. This is kinetic energy. It depends on two things, mass and velocity. Since the mass does not change, the velocity changes. So kinetic energy mainly depends on velocity. 
okay? So this is the one thing that you want to remember. What about momentum? Momentum is conserved. Momentum is conserved. Two things, kinetic energy conserve, momentum conserve for this elastic collision, okay? Now, moving on to inelastic collision. Opposite to this one, object, they move together, move together after collide. If they move together, that means they are moving at the same speed. So they share the same V, share same speed uh, or share the same velocity. Okay, so for example, what are the objects that are considered inelastic collision? Like car crash, one car crash into another car, they stick together for a certain duration of time, okay? Maybe after that, they bounce off like that. But right after the hit, it got crushed and then they stick together, they slide over a distance, something like that. That is one example. Car crash is an inelastic collision. Any other examples? Like planet crash with another planet or asteroid clash, clash, uh, clash with another asteroid, okay? So asteroid come and hit this planet and then they stick together like that. That is inelastic collision. Or a plasticine, collide with another plasticine, then they stick together like that. They share the same velocity. That is also collision, but is classified as inelastic, okay? So that is the difference between these two. Move together after collide, share the same velocity. So what about the kinetic energy for the inelastic? Kinetic energy, is not conserved, okay? Is not conserved. That means the total kinetic does not equal to before, the, the total before does not equal to total after. There is energy loss because of heat, like in a car crash, okay? In a car crash, one car is moving this fast. It has certain kinetic energy. After it collides with another car, the second car does not move as fast as the first one, right? It's going to have, maybe it only slides a bit, but it doesn't have the same kinetic energy as the first incoming car. It cannot be. Why? Because when they hit, a lot of energy is lost as heat friction during the collision. Okay, the easiest way to, re to think of it is like this. During a car crash, a car is coming here, having certain kinetic energy. After they crash, they move together, right? They do not slide as fast as before. So there are kin kinetic energy does not equal, right? Before does not equal after. Does not equal after. Why? Because energy is lost as heat due to friction. The first one, the elastic collision, energy, kinetic energy is conserved. So it's like the, the snooker, okay? You make the cue, the ball go this fast. It go and hit another ball. The second ball also go this fast, right? How fast the first one go? The second one goes the same way. If the first one stop completely, right? If you play, if you play uh, snooker, you you hit the center, you hit the center, and then the first ball stop completely, right? And then the second ball move the same speed as the first one. That is elastic, so that means the kinetic energy before is the same as after, so they they move the same speed. That is an example, okay? So this is example of inelastic. Now. Momentum is always conserved. Because if momentum is not conserved, we cannot use the equation, right? So it's always conserved. Again, uh, 
for momentum to be conserved, we what we do what we ignore friction. We ignore uh, air resistance. Okay, now the formula is the same m1 u1 plus m2 v2 u2 equals m1 v1 m2 v2 but for this one in way tamen so yang the velocity so i will tiao it tiao what the formula to be an m1 u1 plus m2 u2 equals to since v1 si deng yi v2 di ma share the same velocity yeah so I will just write V. So M one V, yeah M two V. This I will write it. Then factorize V, M one plus M two. Okay, then I get the formula for inelastic collision. This one. Then this is for elastic collision. Nothing new. It's still the same formula. It's just that because the V is the same, I factorize out. 